Okay, folks, I uh, wanted to go back to this gas gauge deal here. Uh, I think some people understand it and some people may not. But uh, one thing's for sure, uh, this wire ignition switch running down to the gas gauge, it shouldn't have power all the time. So, which is not a not an issue there. I'm not worried about that. I can change that. What worries me is we shouldn't have power going from the gauge into, or from the gauge into the sending unit. The sending unit, evidently, that this used was a different style. And my fear is if you was to hook power to the sending unit that I've got on here with it having a rheostat that actually works off of ground. In other words, uh, from my understanding, trying to explain this to where I understand it, but you understand it too, the, uh, the ohms changes as the float moves, but it actually sort of varies the ground. So you have, when you got less gas, I'm assuming you would have less of a ground. And as the fuel increases, the float raises, you know, it actually increases the ohms and that's what makes the needle move. Okay, the problem is, is if I was to hook power to that, that little rheostat wire in there would probably work like a heat, heating element. And if it didn't bust it instantly, uh, it would heat it up. And that's what I was talking about, a fuse in the gas tank. I mean, basically, I would be building something that would uh, possibly be a bomb. I mean, it would explode. And that's one of the reasons that I'm real leery on hooking this thing up. And, you know, the, the ground system, you know, on a native ground car should be the only thing that would be hooked to it. Now, I know on new cars with electric fuel pumps and stuff, but, you know, we're talking about totally different technology. We're not talking about 1927 stuff. And uh, so that's what's got me worried about that. I think that this gas gauge that's in this car is just a completely different style of what was used on the later stuff. And until I know for sure, I'm definitely not going to be hooking it up to this gauge. Now, if I wanted to, I could hide a gauge and hook it up, you know, get a, a gauge out of a, you know, 49 to 52 Chevrolet. And, uh, you know, that wouldn't be an issue. But... I'm not so worried about the gas gauge working as I am it looking right in the back. Uh, you know, I'm not going to drive this thing enough to, to worry about gas. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely have gas in it. So, uh, but that's where we stand on that. Uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to do it like I've done it, uh, you know, I know somebody said something about why I didn't clean up the, the uh, where they had put this on. This is factory. Okay, and it don't look good because it's got, when, when they evidently sealed this tank, they spilled it over. Uh, this is actually put on and soldered on, and this is not a bad piece. This just needs to be cleaned up really well. Uh, that's all it is. I mean, it's not, it's not buggered up. It's not all welded in like, you know, it may look like on the camera. Uh, it's just an issue that it just needs cleaned. And doing it this way, if I do happen to find the right gauge in the future, which I probably won't, but I mean, if I do, I can unbolt this, bolt the gauge in it, and I've changed nothing on the car. Uh, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to do here. But this was exactly what I was talking about, about not being able to get parts for something. Uh, you know, you, if you can machine, cast, you know, fabricate, and, and possibly, you know, use something off of something different just by modifying something, you know, you can get by not having, you know, source for parts for a particular vehicle. And uh, this is, you know, basically an example of that to where I didn't have the part. I put this in it. We could we could get a gauge working. I could get a 52, you know, 51 Chevrolet gauge and absolutely get it working if this is a good sending unit. But uh, like I said, that's not the issue. But the other issue was is I didn't want to change this tank. I, I didn't want to you know, go to cutting this off and changing things on the tank itself. You know, this is a simple setup. Unbolt it, bolt the original back in if we ever find one, and we're good to go, and it's done. So uh, this is just, you know, possibly temporary. You know, it might stay there a while, but anyway, 
that's that and this is right it's supposed to have power on one side negative on the other the blue is the power wire yellow is negative why they've done that I don't know but uh, but it's not supposed to be power all the time which it is so they just happen to wire it wrong uh, not a big issue so what I'm probably going to do is uh, cut the blue one back uh, figure out a way maybe to to hook the, the ground the yellow up to it just as a for looks and you know we'll we'll call this quits for for now on the the gauge until I can you know figure something else out on it. okay a uh, couple other things one thing is I want to get my light wired uh, I was going to update to a maybe a different set of lights something a lot safer than this but I don't want to uh, really don't want to do that not not just going to this show that I'm going to now this is twisted and well it's not mounted right but uh, I don't have one of the bolts in it but I do know for a fact that this has got a backup light which I'm assuming could be this clear piece up here or it could be this purple looking uh, it's got a brake light and a running light parking light so the wires there's four three wires here so we get ground we get one brake light and he had them tagged at one time uh, why they wired this car with all the same color wires I don't know but you know it makes it a pain but we can get a test light back here and uh, one should be brake one should be backup light one should be running light parking light and then of course the other you know it's just a grounded system so uh, I don't think that'll be an issue hopefully the wires are right I did see the brake light switch it is mounted and uh, it actually mounts on a chain and mounts back on the frame and it runs the chain runs up to the brake pedal and so it, it, it's pretty simple system so it should work and if we can get that working bolted on uh, spare tire I have finally figured this out but you know I don't know if that's a good thing because I am missing something okay I was able to look at some of the pictures and I know some there's been quite a few subscribers that's posted information and pictures and stuff like that of stuff they had found and somebody had posted one of a uh, of there was a picture of the brake system uh, of the car and I, I wish I went back and looked to see what subscriber that was but I didn't and I'm sorry but there was a picture of the brake system and there was a picture of uh, the rear of one of these cars which showed can't remember what it was actually trying to show uh, maybe the shockless chassis or something like that because I don't know if you know it or not but these, is, these are actually mounted on what looks like fire hose and they call this a shockless chassis uh, it's supposed to you know not transfer the the energy from the springs through the frame as much as you know it would on a something that had steel even with rubber bushings so anyway I think that's what they were advertisers showing but I was able to look and see and what they have done I'm going to show you how these demountable de rims work and how they they go on and then I can explain this and you understand it and you understand what I'm going to have to, to fabricate or build or because I'll probably never find what I'm looking for okay this is the uh, the rim you got the wooden spokes of course they mount in and I don't know if these have been redone or if these are original and just in good shape if I was to guess I'd say they're probably original just been cleaned up and, and in good shape no issues whatsoever with any of my spokes uh, you know I didn't see any major cracks or nothing like that so you know we're good to go on that these actually come out and come into holes on this inner rim and this inner rim is just like this one except this is like a 21 inch wheel this is off an of old Chevrolet and you can actually see where the spokes went in here and it had wooden spokes all the way around and uh, what it is is the inside of this is bigger than the outside and the rim actually slides over and then seats up against this and then your your lugs hold the, the outer rim on which is your demountable rim which is this and it's split comes apart and uh, so the demount just slides over top of the center section and these clamps go on okay evidently what they had on the back of this car was a center section that did not have the spoke holes in it it had the bolt holes that bolted to these brackets so you would slide the rim over and then you just put your locks on and I did notice that this lock is backwards so I didn't do that but it's gonna need taken care of but uh, 
anyway, so uh, what we're uh, what we're going to have to do, and these are look like haze, so we can try to find some different locks. But we're probably going to have to build this center section without the holes in it. I don't think I can find one. If I could find one, I could probably patch the holes and weld it and make it look like one solid piece. Uh, from here to here is 15 inches. This is an 18 inch rim and tire. So I measured from here to here and it's 15 inches. So the rim goes between here, this bracket goes on down here, and then the bottom section. So it bolts in three places on that. And then you would just simply slide your demountable wheel over, put a, you know, I don't think it had the, the full lug nuts all the way around it with the, with the clamps, wheel clamps, but it might have had, you know, five, but um, if I could get, you know, get three on it or something, that would hold it fine. But that's what we're going to have to do. We need to come up with one of these, and like I said, even if I've got to make it. Now, this side here is, you know, about an inch. The other inside is, you know, almost an inch and a half. So it's, you know, taller, Oop, taller on the inside. So hold just a minute. Okay, so it's a little taller on the inside, so... I think I can, uh, if I can't find anything really quick, I can probably take a 15 inch rim and cut it, you know, some later model and do a little work on the lip of it and maybe, you know, weld two outside edges together or the inside and the outside edge. I can end up making something that would look close. You wouldn't be able to really tell it. Uh, the only thing is, is this bend is really a sharp bend in comparison to you know a newer rim where it's more of a bend like this or even a, I guess an older rim but so our, our radius may be a little bit different but uh, if we could make it work we can make it work uh, you know weld it up good grind it and then of course I uh, have to have an extra hole for the for the uh, valve and then uh, the uh, it's got to be open on the inside because where this rim splits at, which is right here, it actually uh, has that clamp. Uh, I'll show you on this one. It has a piece that holds it together, so you know you got to have room for it to go in. And uh, so once that's uh, once that's done, it just takes three three holes in it to be able to hold it onto our bracket. So I think I'll run in, check on eBay, and see if I can find some of these haze hold down these clamps and I'm gonna get that one turned around but uh, but I think that'll work uh, I think it needs some major cleaning don't it but uh, anyway that's the plan uh, I'd love to be able to I'll get my new tires and then I'll just put one of my old spares back here for uh, for temporary you know the opening here is so big between the bumpers you know it's just a big open area and it kind of looks weird so I think uh, a spare on the back would make it look a lot better. So I think that's one of the things we're going to try to do before that show. I'm going to try to hang this exhaust. They've got it wired to the uh, springs. We're going to try to you know hang it right. Now, I doubt it had flex pipe from the original, but uh, we're probably going to replace that pipe. This pipe only goes up to the the second heater, so we may have to uh, we may replace it with steel, or we may use that and just clamp it right. There's a lot of hangers for this thing. I want to go ahead and get that back seat cover off. Clean things up a little bit. You know, you, it, it's only going to look so good inside because it's you know, everything's missing, but uh, I've got a line on a 1920s uh, Singer commercial sewing machine, and you know, it's period correct for the car, uh, and it, it would be a nice, simple sewing machine. I think I'm going to try to pick it up and, you know, so I can get started on some interior. But anyway, that's where we stand on it. Uh, we're gonna got a lot of other stuff to work on, working on the drag car, but I'm trying to uh, just fit this in between. Uh, I've got the brackets that go on here. I think I'm gonna bolt them on to help strengthen this up. I'll probably just bolt the lights on, you know, without having them uh, hooked up, the cow lights, and maybe clean up some of this primer a little bit. It looks terrible, really, but it is what it is. Uh, Another thing real quick before I get off here. Uh, from what I can see online on the running boards, and I'm hoping to learn something when I, when I go to this show, uh, it looks like 
that it used a thin board like this. They were covered and then they had a piece of what looked like aluminum angle or something over the edge that, you know, done this transition. So I, I don't know for sure, but I'm hoping I can find a car because a lot of them ran that similar setup. I'm hoping I can find a car at that show that's, you know, basically the same or close to the same. Hmm, wonder what that is. Okay, anyway, that's where we stand, and I'll show you more as I go. Okay, folks, uh, getting more stuff figured out. Got the exhaust hanger on. I moved the, the cast iron one to this side because it was actually made for a smaller pipe, and I think it was for this, uh, the heater. Now, I will probably at least do this pipe back in bent tubing when I'm done. This is like inch and three-quarter, but... Uh, I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to leave that like that. i just trying to get, they had it tied up to the spring, so I was just trying to get it a little bit straighter and looking better. And working on this uh, spare tire mount, what I'm going to do, I've come to the conclusion that this one is bent pretty bad. I think it's bent right here because if you bring it out even with this one and where the rim needs to mount, it's bent this way. So I think if we bring this back, It'll be straight enough that we can build our piece and then bolt our inner rim to it. So I've done a lot of measuring on rims, trying to find something I could use to make that, uh, you know, cutting a lip off. Uh, a lot of rims has got a safety bead, so it kind of makes it rough. Uh, this is just an old rusty chrome reverse wheel that somebody's painted. But uh, it's too small. It's not really going to work like I want. So... What I'm going to do is to replicate it as close as I can. I'm going to cut two rings out, and then I will cut a flat piece out, and I'll roll it on the uh, the slip roll, and we'll just build this. We'll just have to weld it all the way around, and then uh, grind it and and uh, drill the holes in it. But we'll make it to the exact size that way it works right. And uh, I, for the lugs, I had I hadn't had any luck finding any of these. Hayes lugs, I guess what they are. Uh, I may take these lugs. I've got three here. That would be enough to hold it. Now, they're made with holes in them, but I may take and either I can put holes in the other one or I can just uh, grind them off and just use them just to hold the spare on. So, just trying to get the back looking a little better. You know, it looks so rough with stuff tied on the back and stuff, you know, with everything missing. And that big hole needs something to fill it in. So uh, that's what we're working on now. I'll probably get the plasma cut, cutter fired up and go ahead and get it measured out how I want it. And we'll cut the uh, two rings out and the one straight piece and start building that rim or the inner rim. Okay, I decided to pull one of the wheels off. I just wanted to see, make sure that this extra rim I had, it's off an Oldsmobile, but make sure it would fit on there. And uh, be able to get a measurement on it and how we're going to do it good because the inner lip's going to have to be bigger than the outer lip but pull this off. and what we've got as you can see it's tapered it gets bigger as it goes so we're not going to worry about that uh, what we're going to do is make this one the size of the rim we'll make this one a little taller and uh we might go a little bit wider and uh, just so you know the rim will go on and we'll be able to put our locks on and it looks like it just got basically carriage bolts that, that go in got one end of them bent up where they'll clear the, the rim but they're not much more than just carriage bolts so uh, shouldn't be a problem should be able to fake something like that and you can see the holes in the rim are actually just small like they were on that old Chevrolet rim that I showed you and you know the spokes are big here and uh, there's still wheel rights that that redo these wheels but or these rims but I'm sure it's uh it's an art in itself uh, I know there's some Amish and stuff that that do them up New York Pennsylvania around that area but anyway uh knee action shock you can see and this is nothing but another piece of that fire hose strap canvas strap so and I did notice the fenders are not bolted on really well 
Uh, looks like it just put a lot of screws in them, which they primed over the, the lacing that goes here. I've got some extra, but I don't have enough to do the whole thing. So what we're going to do later on when, when we get ready to paint this car is pull the fenders, the running boards, front and back uh, fenders and running boards off. And uh, that way we can paint the car burgundy. And then we'll do the fenders and running boards and, you know, with them off and paint them black and then put them back on. And uh, we'll use new fender lacing and that way, you know, it won't be painted on. And uh, not quite sure why they primed it, but sometimes I wish they hadn't. If they had just left an original collar, whatever it was, it would have probably looked a little better. But I think the whole car was red, including the fenders. But, uh, you know, I have no idea. It's even possible that there could be an original paint because I don't see any paint underneath the red. So I really just don't know. And uh don't know what shade of red. There's no good information on what they used and so anyway we're gonna get at this and uh go ahead and try to get something made here. Okay, we come up with a fifteen and a half ID, seventeen and a half O D on the outside plate, go eighteen O D on the inside plate, and the two and a quarter is gonna be the width of my piece. Now all we need is the length of the band to go around. So what we need is 15 and a half, which would be 15.5. Oh. And times pi, which is 3.14. So we need 48.67. So 48 and a little over half inch. So we'll just go 49, that way we know we've got it right, and then we'll cut it after we let it overlap. So uh, that'll be our, our full radius. All right. Okay, folks, uh, instead of using a plasma cutter to cut out our circles, we're going to use this uh, antique nibbler here. And some of you have probably seen this on my channel before, and the ones that haven't, here it is. Uh, I'll show you what you can do with it. I've got a circle attachment for it. Here's a circle that I had cut out before, and I've cut into it just a little bit playing here. But uh, same machine, paint's a little worse on it. I try to keep it covered up, but of course it gets off sometimes so it's been wet a few times but I mean we're going to uh, probably sit this in the corner of that building we are the carport we just put together but anyway I'll show you how it works turn it on lock it in and then uh, basically it just uh, nibbles away it does any direction you move it as you can see it just ate a chunk out of it well this is rated i think for i think it's an eighth inch it may be a little more than that but I've got the manual for this believe it or not but anyway uh what i do is i, I drill a, a small hole i think it's 316 so i have to check again get my measurement right move this where we need it i could this will actually do a six foot circle which uh you know it's got outriggers you fold out and legs but anyway basically what you do is put it on and you just turn it Get it where you want it, turn it right around, just move back and forth, tighten it down. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut our outside diameter first, and then we'll cut our inside out. And we'll actually, uh, we'll have to do a starter hole. And uh, because this is actually, let me shut it down and I'll see if I can show you what it's got. Got my oiler on here. I'm dripping slow. I'm not going to turn it off because it's kind of tight. I'm just going to back it down to where the drips are so slow it won't drip but uh anyway what it's got uh let me see is a nub sticking down and then it's just a, a center punch is all it is so it's awfully dirty we get some oil on it but uh anyway that's how it works it just cuts that little uh moon shape like a little tiny hand nibbler but you know a whole lot bigger version so we're going to get uh, our measurements done. We'll measure from the center of this to the edge of this, and that'll give us our radius. And we'll get one. I'm going to cut it out with the plasma first, but I'm going to cut it, you know, extra big. And uh, I can't do with the plasma a circle like this can do. This can do an absolutely perfect circle. And, uh, you know, I won't have to clean it up with a grinder when I'm done. So anyway, let's get at it. All right, what we got here is a center hole of a quarter inch and then I started a quarter inch starter hole and I cut this about 19 you know just a little bit extra I actually cut it with a nibbler
And there you go, perfect circle. That will come in. It's about an inch, I think, and then uh, we'll cut the inside out, and that'll give us our ring we need. And then we'll have some frisbees left over. Okay, folks, here's what we end up with. Two circles there that are going to be just safe for scrap or not scrap, but to use for other stuff. There's our two rings we need. One of them is uh, 18 and a, I think uh, 18 and a quarter inches wide at the outside, and one of them is uh, 17 and a half. And then they're both 15 and a half inside, so that's what we needed. There's our scrap pieces. Um, you know, we probably won't save them. But, uh, so now we need to roll a piece, and I've got to come up with a piece to roll. I've got a piece here, but it's too thin. I don't like it. So I need 49 inches, which is, you know, longer than a 4x8 sheet is wide, so it's kind of hard to find a piece around here, but I'm going to hunt something up. I may have to cut it with a plasma cutter, but we'll get a circle rolled, and then we'll get started tacking it together. Okay, folks, I have actually got the spare on. Uh... I haven't straightened this out yet. I, got, I had to get in kind of hurry here because it's going to get dark on me and uh, I don't have any more time to work on it. So I figured I'd go on and do a wrap up video on this one and then we'll uh, we'll finish it up probably tomorrow and uh, if I get time. But I've got a lot of welding to do on my piece and then uh, I'll grind it and clean it up and make it look good. But a uh, couple of things. The, I don't like how close the tire is there, which that might be okay. It might be normal. But uh, this used to screw on down here, or screw in, and was a, you know, a little bit of adjustment, but evidently it broke at one time, and somebody welded it back. I can shorten it up if I need to to bring the bottom of the tire in, and that really won't change anything on everything else. I have not straightened this one out yet. It just needs bent this way and then brought, brought forward. That'll bring it to the center. But uh, I'll be drilling holes in here and putting three rim clamps on it. Uh, to hold it on and maybe I can find some of them haze clamps uh, eventually but I'm gonna well I don't think I got it on there I didn't have it on all the way there anyway I'm gonna pull it off and show you what it looks like and uh, and you'll get an idea of uh, you know how it ended up and what it what it ended up doing and then, like I said I got a lot of welding to do on it so all right okay that's what we ended up with uh, I didn't have time. I wanted to show everybody, you know, as much of the process as I could, but, you know, I, I was running out of time. So anyway, uh, I rolled this into my slip roll, and a lot of you have seen it. It's the antique one from early 1900s. And then uh, I just, for now, I've just got it tacked in. I uh, put the, this one on the outside, put the other one on the inside that was a little bit wider. It's got about a quarter inch more gap around it, and that way the rim comes in and hits it. And uh, that's going to work out really good. I mean, that's as close to an original piece as I could get and uh, not have all the holes in it. So once I, uh, once I weld it up, it'll come out really nice. Now, I cut this strip with a plasma cutter. As you can see, there's a little bit of gaps here and stuff, but it's got to be welded anyway. But, uh, you know, if I'd have had something nice or cut it with that, uh, if I can set a fence up and cut it with that nibbler and, but you got to have a straight edge to start with, and I didn't have a straight edge to start with on it, so. Uh, but, you know, it'll be fine. It'll, it'll grind and everything. And I actually put my, uh, my valve stem hole where the weld's at, so I'll weld each side of it and grind it. But, you know, it's not a problem to make this look good. And, uh, but that's exactly as close as I could get to what the factory looks like. And thankfully, like I said, you know, one of the YouTube subscribers, yeah, he found some pictures for me, and it just happened to have one picture of the back where I could see this ring, and it was from an angle, and uh, it, it actually worked out really well because, I, you know, it was what I needed. Now, it was a different year, and it had different brackets here. The brackets came down and bolted around it or, you know, on this pipe. It didn't come down through like this one, but, uh, but it still helped me out a lot, and uh, without that, I, I, you know, I was sort of lost on it. But uh, it's figured out, you know, uh, like I said, I've got my brackets uh, hung there, and then uh, we're going to work on the tail light 
probably tomorrow, something like that. And uh, uh, I don't, I haven't ordered tires yet, so I'm not sure what I'm going to get. And I wish I had the tires in, but like I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm running calls and been getting quite a few wrecks here the last few days. And it rained a little bit today, and as soon as it rained, the, uh, the, you know, the cars pile up. So, uh, but anyway, this, this is going to work out really nice. And uh, I appreciate everybody watching, and uh, I'll show you more next time. Bye.